the journals. Today we're going to be talking about slope-intercept form, which we're familiar with, but we're also going to talk about how to calculate slope and the different names we have for slope. So, before we can get going too far, I want you to complete exploration number one with your groupies. So, just so the, um, just a quick review of what you've learned in past years. Your slope, your slope, which we call M, is the rise and the run where your graph hits two points evenly. So we're going to rise, how far? Two, two and we run three. three. So it should hopefully be a quick review. Rise two, run three. And you'll notice when I rise, I'm actually going up. So that's positive two. And when I run, I'm going to the right. So that's positive three, two thirds. Okay. Y-intercept is where it crosses the Y-axis. And in this graph, it crosses at two. Okay. So M equals two-thirds, B equals two. Okay? This is what we call y-intercept. That's what we use the letter B, and this is what we call slope. We use the letter M. Okay, so if I find M and B here, there's a point. In fact, that point happens to be my B term, which is negative one. And in this case, I rise two. No, nope. I rise two. two. Three. Three. If I'm going to go to here, sorry, I rose too far. So I rise two and I run one. Okay, I go up two, but I'm going to the left this time, which means I am subtracting. It's where it hits perfectly, where it hits your grid perfectly. All right, so we can reduce that to negative 2. Okay, how many got them? All right, I'll be walking around. If you have questions, make sure you ask. I want you to move on to exploration 2 at the bottom. Off you go. Come on, let's get you filling in the table up here, please. Come on up. Put your answers in the table. No, just go. You can do it. Okay. Sure. Oh, Come on. I'll write the line part. I'll fill I'll fill in one. You get that one. What is this? This is one. Here we go. Dude, you're supposed to do that part. We're a group. Okay, it's all on you. Negative X, right? Negative X. Why'd you do all of them? <laughs> okay, here we go. Need everyone's attention back up here. Let's um let's check out what we got right and what we might have some confusion on. First, these are all linear because X is to the first power. Well done. So the description, they're all lines. Okay, second, our slope, remember, is the thing that's attached to the, to the x. So those of you who recall y equals mx plus b, that is slope-intercept form. Now, we've referenced that already this year, but that's our m and that's our b. Okay, our slope comes before the x. Therefore, when we're naming the slope, so instant negative two-thirds, here it's two, perfect. Here it's the number in front of x, not x which is 1. So this is a negative 1. All right. And this is a number in front of x as well, which is 1. Okay. So if they don't show the number, it's always 1. We don't put x. So tell your neighbor what I just said about slope and x. Don't write x. All right. For a bonus dum-dum, anyone know the name of the number in front of x? Yes. Slope. No. Yes. Oh, it actually is slope, but that's not the one I'm looking for. Their actual special name, I'll give you a dumb dumb. Special name for the number that's attached to a variable. Yes? One. Ma, yeah. No. No. It's called a coefficient. Oh, I knew it. Coefficient. Okay. That's a boring name. Yep. All right. So 
We're going to graph these. So for A, I've got, two, I've got a y-intercept of 3. So the way we graph it, we go and find 3 on the y-axis. There it is. And then from that 3, we are going down 2 and over 3. Now, I always attach the negative to the top. Even when it doesn't show it, I do that. So I'm going to call that down 2 and over 3. And that gives me a slope there. And I could also go up two, but then I'd have to go over to the left three. Okay. And then we use a straight edge because we're cool like that. And there it is. Okay, so something to, to make sure that we're clear on in terms of lines. A negative slope falls. You read your lines from left to right. A negative slope goes down from left to right. So here, that's a negative slope. If your line's going up from left to right, it's positive. So you read books from left to right, just like you read your slope from left to right. And you have two special cases. You have a flat line. Flat line like that, what's our slope? That is zero slope. Okay? Line like this is? This is undefined. Okay? This type of line is an x equals. Or excuse me, is a y equals. Y equals some kind of constant number. For instance, Y equals 5. That would be an example. This one is X equals. For instance, X equals 5. All right, let's go for B. Everyone graph letter B on graph B, please. Okay, Mac, where's it going to cross the y axis? What? Uh, what? Crossing a negative 2. And from negative 2, Brian, what am I doing? No. Nope. Good, so this slope is 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. And we keep doing that, keep going with it. Yes, Sarah. Um, something to help remember, like, so it's up 2 over 1, because 2 is on the top and the fraction is equal to 1. Yeah. Good. That's a good way to think about it. Yeah. 2 is on top, so you go up, because it's on top. Okay? Hey, go ahead and turn your page. You have two more grids, and above this grid, or below this grid, letter C, we're going to graph letter C. So negative x plus 1. And letter D is x minus 4. Give it a go, graph. Wow. Worse than the picture that it's not cool. All right, show your neighbor your graph for letter C. You can brag it up. Won't you see mine? How many got it? Should be falling from left to right. All right? It's going down because it's a negative slope. So this one will be going up from left to right. Be rising. Our M is 1. That's the number in front. Here it was negative 1. Our B is negative 4. Start at negative 4, go up 1 over 1, and voila. Okay. Any questions? Okay, rate yourself 1 to 5 real quick. All right, I'll be around to help out here in a minute. I want you to turn the page. They have some different note pages there you can look through, but I want to make sure that we understand 
one of our core concepts here that's actually, let me put it up on this page. Okay, this is your slope formula. An awful lot of, <laughs> awful lot of uh, <coughs> little giggling going on. Hey, you guys, your slope formula? <coughs> slope formula is change in y over change in x. Change in y over change in x. Okay, that means when you use your y-axis as a measuring stick and you use your x-axis as a measuring stick, that's how you're finding slope. So I'm going to explain how to use this formula right here by using these graphs on here. Okay, this is page 83 of your student journal. So take a look at 83 of your student journal. On page 83, okay, I want to, well, let's, I guess number one, hopefully it's fairly easy. What's the slope? No, no, undefined. no undefined. undefined. Okay, how many say it's undefined? How about zero? It is undefined. Okay, we'll talk more about that here in a minute. Okay, this one. Now, I know you can just count using your graph, but I'm expecting you to be able to use a slope formula when you're not given a graph. So unless you want to graph every single problem, then we should probably figure out how to use the slope formula. Slope has a lot of different names. We call slope, we call it M. We call it rise over run. We call it change in Y. over change in x, which is what rise over run is. And I'm going to focus in on that change in y over change in x because that's called, another way to write that is delta y over delta x. Okay? Whoa. And that's where they use this cool formula. Y1, or excuse me, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And all that is saying is if I have a coordinate, for instance, 3, 4, and I have another coordinate, negative 1, negative 4. If I take and use my first x value and my first y value, and it doesn't matter which one you call your first or your second, and then I use my second x value and my second y value, okay, I can figure out the slope. Now, once again, I know that you can look at that graph and just count boxes. The point is that you shouldn't have to count boxes the rest of your life. Okay, So if you're using your y-axis as a measuring stick, you're going from this point to that point, or this point to that point. On the y-axis, I'm going from negative 4 to 4. To four. How far up am I going? 8. I'm going up 8. So when I move from negative 4 to 4, the difference, well that actually gives me negative 4 minus 4 is what? Negative 8. Negative 8. And we'll get back to that here in a minute. We just said it was 8. Well, what if you started here and went down? Well, then it's kind of, I mean, it's still going a distance, right? Okay, well, let's accept that it's negative 8 here in a minute. But we've got a change of 8. Okay? Let's look at this one. I am going from here on X to here on X. So I'm traveling from negative two or negative one all the way to three. How far is that? Four. Everyone agrees it's four. Okay, so we're going from negative one, negative one to three. Well, what's that give me there? It gives me negative 4. So I'm using this formula right here, and I'm getting negatives. Well, what's a negative divided by negative? Positive. So the negatives cancel, so it's just like having 8 over 4. Right? So it ends up working out in the long run, and 8 divided by 4 is what? 
2. And how do we make 2 into a fraction? 2 over 1. Now please note, if I start at this point and I go up 2 and over 1, what happens? I get a point on that line. I go up 2 and over 1, I get a point. I go up 2 and over 1, I get another point. Okay? That is how you use the slope formula given two points. We didn't need the graph to do that. Pictorially, that's why the slope formula works. Okay, the slope of this line is 2. The slope is a, what type of slope is this? Oh, well, we know it's linear. Because we're talking, it's a positive slope. When it says describe the slope, we're saying it's positive. Now, here's the deal. If I'm at this point and I go to this point, how much did I rise? I start, let's say I started at negative 4 and I go to 4. How much did I rise? 8. I rose 8. How much did I run? Zero. I go from 3 to 3, I go 0. You, can't, you cannot divide by 0. 8 divided by 0 is? No. You can't divide by 0. It's undefined. Yeah. 8 divided by 0 is undefined. Okay? If I have 8 of something and I want to make it into nothing, that does, you can't divide it into no parts. There's at least one part. If you subtract it, it's not going to Yeah. All right, so what type of line is that, positive or negative? Never knew there was a negative. negative. Okay, negative slope. Hey, we're going to move on. Number four. All right, another name for slope is called? Rise up run. We already have it. Slope. Coefficient. No. Yes. Change in y, change in x. Rate of? change. So let's figure it out. I want you to find the rate of change in that table. Brian, happy birthday. That was a fail. It's pretty cool though. Okay, what's my rate of change? Come on, what's change in X? One. All the way it is. What's changing Y? Okay, so slope is? Y equals. Slope is equal to M, which is change in what? Change in Y over. Change in Y over change in X. Change in Y is? Zero. Change in X is one. If you have nothing, here's my nothing, and I'm going to give, well, I'll give you some of my nothing. How much do you get? Uh, nothing. nothing. Slope is nothing. <coughs> you can have zero and divide it into parts. You just <coughs> here. I'll give my nothing to all of you. Yay! Yay. You're welcome. You gave me okay, you're not welcome. All right, I want you to find the rate of change for number five, please. They tell you the slopes lie on the line, so we should be able to find a rate of change. All right, tell your neighbor what you got. Uh, I'm positive 2 or negative 8. Okay. How many got negative 4? Woo! Make sure we simplify, right? We get negative 8 over 2. Don't flip it around and have 1 fourth or negative 1 fourth. Y over X. So it's kind of backwards when what it looks like up here. All right? Y over X. Okay, ask your neighbor if you made the mistake of flipping it. Ask your neighbor if they made the mistake of not reducing it. All right. Last piece. I want you to focus in on 7 and 8 first. Tell your neighbor, actually on your own, write what M is and write what B is. 7 and 8. Because I'm the teacher. Okay, 7 and 8. What is the other letter? Was it B? Oh. 
You were standing in front of it, so I didn't see it. Aw, oh, man. All right, Jack, M. Number seven, Jack, or excuse me, not Jack, Gunner. Number seven, M. Okay, Tyler, B. Kellen, number eight, M. Logan, B. Yeah, we're not adding anything, so it's zero. Very good. Any questions on those two? Number six, find M and B, please. While you're doing that, I'm going to hand out your assignment. Find M and B on number Hey, you got to put it in slope intercept form. If you're going to do that, that means you need to get Y by itself first. So first thing we move is 6X. Subtract 6X from both sides. We get 24 <coughs> minus 6X. Or the other way to think of it is whoops, negative 6X plus 24. And then we divide by four. divide by four. That becomes y. Please quit kicking the table. Negative six over four plus twenty-four over four, which is what's negative six over four. Now hold on. I just I just handed out the paper. Like I get the further I go back in the class, the less participation I get. And I just handed out the paper. Some of you are saying, "Hey, do we get our test back? Do we we have homework?" Well, dude. The way we get our tests back and the way we don't have homework is that we get more work time in class. And the way that happens is when I ask questions like, hey, what's that become? You guys participate. Otherwise, dude, it takes longer to get through the lesson. Logan. Okay, we'll get there. Okay, I'm not, I'm not letting anyone from the front three rows answer this question. Mercedes. Negative one and a half, which we don't use in math, or at least in this situation. Negative 1.5 we won't use either. Kai. Okay, what goes into both 6 and 4? Two. 2. How many 2's go into 6? 3. How many 2's go into 4? 2. That is negative 3 halves. And 24 divided by 4 is? 6. Bailey, quit kicking the table. Are you kicking? No. Who's kicking? I'm giggling my tail. Oh, all right. Negative three halves x plus six. Sorry, Bailey. Oh, you're kicking my table. Someone's kicking my table. It must be you. It's not you. I'm not. All right. Hey, you guys have your assignment. I will try to get your quizzes back to you. Okay.